Welcome to this video. My name is Philip Ekberg, and today we'll be talking about improvements made to pattern matching in C Sharp 9. Before we get into the improvements that have been made to pattern matching in C Sharp, I briefly want to cover what pattern matching is. I want you to consider that you're looking at a random fruit. To determine what fruit it is, you can identify its different attributes. In programming, this would be the property or field values. For example, is it related to a lemon? Is it green? Is it round? Does it have seeds? Or is it edible? Probably not. <laughs> this is effectively defining a pattern to help us match different fruits. When we've determined what fruit we are working with, we can, for example, make a lemon pie or lime pie or a banana pancake. How does this translate into programming? Pattern matching isn't really a new concept. It's been around for ages and have been a part of programming languages such as F Sharp, Kotlin and others for a very long time. In C Sharp, however, it's a fairly new language feature and was only first introduced in C Sharp 7. Although at this point, the language feature was rather limited. Prior to the introduction of pattern matching, you might end up writing a code snippet that checks a given type, looks at a few different property values, and then based on that, it would perform some operation. With C Sharp 8, things got a lot more interesting and pattern matching was drastically improved. Not only by allowing us as developers to define patterns that better express the intent of what we're looking for, but also help us write less verbose and more readable code. If you are already comfortable with pattern matching in C Sharp 8, you can skip to the next part of the video, where we talk about the improvements that have been made in C Sharp 9. In C Sharp 8, this is where what's known as the switch expression was first introduced. With the switch expression and different types of patterns, we can write more compact and readable code. And that's truly powerful. In essence, the switch expression lets you define a code block with a switch keyword, sort of like when creating a normal switch. However, with this, each case is a pattern. And when the pattern is a match, you execute the expression on the right. Obviously, the pattern can consist of checking the type and property values. Sound simple? It really is. In addition to checking the type and property values, C Sharp 8 supports three different patterns. Positional pattern, property pattern, as well as the tuple pattern. The positional pattern requires the object to define what's known as a deconstruct method. Or if used directly with a tuple, there's no need for a deconstruct method. The deconstruct method takes the object and allows it to be deconstructed into a tuple. With that in mind, we can define a pattern that determines if the object is deconstructed into something that matches the criteria of being green, has seeds, and is edible. Let's try this again. I'd very much argue that this lime here shouldn't be eaten like this. If we only care about the color, we can use a discard to ignore the last two values that are passed from the deconstruct method. Based on its name, you probably understand that the position matters when creating this pattern. The first value coming out of the deconstruct method is the first value that we are going to match on and so forth. Optionally, you can capture the value that the deconstruct method gives you into a new local variable, meaning that we can use this in the expression part. The property pattern is for the times when we cannot extend the type with a deconstruct method. Here's the same code that we just looked at, written using the property pattern. 
Finally, C sharp 8 allows for a tuple pattern. This is very similar to the positional pattern, with the main difference that the object we match on isn't deconstructed. But it is in fact already a tuple. Ready to hear about the new patterns and the improvements coming in C sharp 9? Let's jump straight into it. The main goal at this point is to introduce patterns that allow more ways of naturally expressing our intent. To do this, C sharp 9 introduces the following six new patterns. Type patterns, conjunctive and patterns, disjunctive or patterns, negated not patterns, parenthesized patterns, and relational patterns. <laughs> Let's go through each of them and see how they're applied in the language. First off, we've got the type pattern, which by the sound of it allows to check if a variable is a given type. We've had ways to do this previously, but with the type pattern, this becomes a little bit more cleaner. Previously, the type in the pattern had to be followed by either a positional, tuple, or a property pattern. Consider the following scenario, where we have a base type that represents a test result. It's subclassed, and we're introducing a positive as well as a negative result. We now want to construct a pattern that allows to check if the outcome is positive or negative or inconclusive. This introduces the type pattern. Just as with previous versions of pattern matching, we can use the discard parameter to match on everything else. We could expand on this pattern and apply a recursive pattern, much like what we've done in C sharp 8. The change in C sharp 9, though, is that we can focus only on the type itself. Next, we'll look at the relational patterns. In short, what the relational patterns allows you to do is to match your input against constant values to determine if the input is greater than, less than, or equal to that constant. To give this a go, we'll make our code a little bit more interesting. I'm going to introduce two new properties on the result class that determines if the test result is valid as well as the test date. We'll also introduce the deconstruct method. Remember, this is a way for us to take the object and deconstruct it into a tuple, which is perfect if we want to use this with pattern matching. The deconstruct method will determine how many days it's been since we first submitted the test. We can now construct a pattern using the positional pattern, much like we saw in C sharp 8. However, we want to say that the test can't be older than 10 days. The first position in this tuple is therefore going to define a pattern to check if the value on the tuple's position is greater than 10. Simply put, this is a pattern to say that the value coming out of the deconstruct method must be greater than the constant we provide. Given something that we match on, we can determine if the value is greater than, less than, or equal without having to be more verbose. Isn't this quite handy? Are you ready for the next pattern? Let's look at conjunctive and patterns. This is just a fancy way of saying that both patterns on either side of an AND keyword must match. Very much like when constructing an IF statement that contains the AND operator, both the sides of the AND operator must be true to enter the IF block. With pattern matching, it's the same thing. But in this case, both patterns on each side of the AND keywords must be a match. Given our current state of the application, how about if we'd like to say that the test must be between 10 and 20 days old? With the conjunctive AND pattern, this is easy. We can simply add the word AND followed by the additional pattern, which could be another relational pattern. 
This doesn't only have to be used with a positional pattern, or tuples at all for that matter. To prove this, we can construct a pattern that first uses the type pattern, followed by the positional pattern, and relational pattern, and finally, using the property pattern to match on the property that is not exposed by the deconstruct method. Explaining this is a mouthful, but when expressed with a pattern and the pattern matching, it's really not that complex. This shows how the pattern can be used to chain on additional required patterns that must match. Obviously, the code could become rather hard to maintain if you start writing code like this. Remember that this just illustrates its capabilities. As with any language feature, use it where it makes sense and where it helps you write more understandable and maintainable code. As you might have guessed, since we can use the conjunctive AND pattern, there's going to be a disjunctive OR pattern. Don't worry, I'll explain this in plain English. It just means that we can use the OR operator. If we replace the AND keyword in our patterns with the OR keyword instead, this means that if any of these different patterns match, it will evaluate the given expression. Very similar to when you use the OR operator in an IF statement. If you happen to construct a pattern that uses both the AND and the OR pattern, which I'm sure a lot of you will, in these scenarios you might also want to use the pattern known as parenthesized patterns. This is not only a way to group the patterns, but a powerful way to express a requirement. Consider the following scenario in our application. For a positive test result that is still valid and was tested on either 10 or 15 days ago, we'd like to send a notification to the tested person. We'd also like to send the same notification if the test was tested on exactly 20 days ago but is now marked as an invalid test. The issue with the following pattern is that the final OR will match on any result that can be deconstructed into this positional pattern. This means if we create a negative test with the test date set to 20 days ago and the is valid property set to false, this would execute the expression. Did you expect that? Given that it works just like an IF statement that has the same type of checks using the AND and the OR operator, it might not be a surprise. Personally, I would probably have missed it. And this would have been considered a bug in my application. To fix this, we can wrap the two patterns after the AND in parentheses. Now we also introduced the parenthesized pattern. Great! This now works as expected. The final pattern we'll cover is negated not pattern. I really don't understand why this one took so long to get into the language. How often haven't you had the urge to write something like if x is not my class? This pattern isn't only great for checking the type, or rather checking that a type is not what you want. You can negate absolutely any pattern. How about saying that we'd like to check if our test result is not positive? Or negate the positional tuple? We could do that easily using the negated not pattern. Please just don't do this for the property pattern in this case, where we're checking a Boolean value. It would be so much easier to simply check if is valid is false. Although, I guess that's up to you. Those were all the new patterns and the improvements in C Sharp 9 for pattern matching. Are you excited about this improvement? Maybe it's just me that gets excited about these language features. I guess anything that helps me write less verbose and more readable code that's also easier to maintain is a really good thing. To summarize, these are the new patterns we are getting in C Sharp 9. Type patterns, conjunctive AND patterns, 
disjunctive or patterns, negated not patterns, parenthesized patterns, as well as relational patterns. If you are coming from a different programming language, this is maybe not a new concept to you. For the rest of us, this is a very nice addition to our programming language. I'm sure that Microsoft has a lot of improvements they want to make to future versions of C Sharp and more patterns to add. I guess time will tell, and it's really an exciting time to be a C Sharp and .NET developer. I'd love to hear in the comments if there's a pattern that you're missing in the language, or if you've already been using pattern matching in your current applications, and if it's drastically changed the way that you write your code. So please leave a comment and let me know. And if you like this video, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. You can also check out my courses on Pluralsight, where I primarily cover C Sharp topics, such as asynchronous programming. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Philip Eckberg, and today we've been covering pattern matching in C Sharp 9. <laughs>